Uh, Mwindi, and uh, we will be talking about edging the path to success. This is a path that he has walked. Uh, he has had some trouble in between highs, lows, till, um, he, till he got to the point where he has uh, authored this particular book. It's called The Narrow Path, Mastering the Art of Awareness. And um, mastering the art of awareness and unlocking the eternal treasures within. I hope you can see it. Yes. So we have Muli here. Muli, welcome. Thank you. Glad I to have you with that. us. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't know if I should jump into this book first or you tell us uh, anything that I've missed about you. No, I mean, everything is, you've said the book well. Um, yeah, that's my first book. So. Mm. It's like, you know, it's a new baby for me, you know, so I, I, I'm excited uh -huh. for everyone to read it. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, it's, a, it's an amazing book, you know. It During the process of me writing it, it, you know, it took, it took I'm not, I'm not saying too much too soon, but <laughs> uh -huh. the writing process was amazing. Okay. Know, yeah. It looks like a good book. Like, uh, it looks like a journey that you're taking us through, you know, just from the, the cover, the cover yeah. uh, page. And uh, let me read through the synopsis. Mm -hmm. So it says, a young adult's journey through life that discovers the narrow path that has the ingredients for life and success. A book that richly articulates and demonstrates that purpose knows no age. Along the narrow path, the author faces internal and external battles, such as facing doubts, overcoming addiction, and being humbled through pivotal temptations and mistakes. He discovers the dangers of uh, the trajectory the modern world is heading towards with the destructive nature of addiction, lack of, uh, lack of awareness of self, and lack of vision that most people are victim to. These realities all taught him to learn and pursue principles, wisdom, and understanding that helped him begin the journey of mastering awareness and unlocking the eternal treasures within him. This is quite nice. Thank oh, you. So we want to know about the journey that you're talking about. Yeah. You want to uh, let us in on it so that we understand how far you've come. Or uh, maybe let's start with where you are at now mm -hmm. before, before we go back to your journey. Yeah, so the book, that's the first project that I launched as mm -hmm. well as the sportswear brand, Motaji. Um, so again, the accent people might not understand what it is, oh. but it, it means <laughs> the dreamer in Swahili. Kay. So those are the two projects that I've worked on right now. Um, that's where I'm at right now, but it started literally four years ago. Mm -hmm. That's when I can say like my life began. Everything was just me existing, you know. So it's during those four years I've learned so much and that's why the synopsis, the blurb is, mm -hmm. it's kind of, gives an, uh, an understanding of the deep things. It's quite a deep book, so yeah. um, it's four years, but it feels like a lifetime, wow. basically. So you've poured your, your all into, into this book. Yeah. All right, so you want to tell us um, how, how did you, you know, you've just said that you feel like your life just began four years ago, mm -hmm. and that's quite a, you know, quite the statement. So what do you mean by ex exactly by that? What happened, you know, the years before that? How are you not, how are you just existing? Mm -hmm. Well, so why I talk about mastering the art of awareness is because everything before that, because I'm 22 now, but from when I was born and I landed on the earth and then I lived 17 years, it's like I didn't have my brain. Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, I can't even tell you where my mind was. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, uh -huh. I couldn't identify my thoughts. I was just, li I was just literally existing, okay. you know. And so, um, in when I was in Michigan, 2020, uh, March, that's when now, like, I, I, stand, I went to stay with two of my other friends there. Uh, we had a lot of fun, um, mm. quite, quite the amount of fun, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> um, we hope we'll but get to hear it, maybe. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe. So, but through that... Uh, through those experiences there in May specifically, the month of May, that's when like now I started having a, uh, like a deeper conviction that mm -hmm. I'm kind of made for more, that there's something, you know, like the things we were doing, it was fun, but I don't know, I felt guilty. You know, I just felt like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I should be doing this. And so it's not like we were doing anything mad, crazy. <laughs> okay. Don't get it twisted. But like, that's when now like I had a voice in my spirit telling me, you know, Muli, you're made for more. And so... It was like a period of maybe like two weeks of me hearing that over and over and over again. It got to a point where it was extremely loud. I couldn't really ignore it. 
And so I prayed one night and I said, God, if this is from you, make yourself known to me. Oh. And so the next morning, nothing changed, like, really, but my heart changed. Like, I, I had uh, two sp specific things. Firstly, I was, you know, I was talking to quite a few girls at the time. Wow. Um, but I woke <laughs> up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my past, relax. So I woke mm -hmm. up and that desire just left me. Like, I didn't really have the desire to talk to anyone as well. And then at the time we had, you know, I was staying with my friends. You know, you think you know your friends until you live with them. <laughs> so we had our snacks. Everyone has our snacks. And me, my snacks was cookies. Okay. So you don't touch my cookies. I put them in the fridge specifically behind specific other things like milk so that I know if that thing has been moved, <laughs> someone's trying you to get my, it. yeah. Uh -huh. So again, I woke up that morning and I didn't have the desire to like hide them anymore. Wow. So my friends were like noticing this is strange about Muli because I left them out on the counter. I didn't put them in the fridge when I used to go do my weekly restock. So <laughs> um, those were the, the significant points in my heart that made me, you know, like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. something is different. And so now that's when I started now exploring what this journey is. I started listening to teachings. I started listening to podcasts. Like I just drowned myself into the, the journey of personal mastery and discovering who you are. You know. Okay. Yeah. So you, you just had, it, it just came to you, something mm -hmm. that, you know, it took like a week, something that just spoke to you, you got convicted and things just shifted yeah. completely. Before, before I ask you the question uh, that I wanted to ask, uh, let's just get clear, you know, whether you are Kenyan or American because of your accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being no, asked, are I'm you American? <laughs> I'm full Kenyan. I'm full Kenyan. But, okay. uh, I mean, I, uh. don't know, I don't know how to explain my accent. It's, it's but you've stayed familiar. in the States, so it explains it a bit. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now, before, before then, before that shift, I'm still trying to get to understand uh, when you talk about this, you know, the internal, the external battles that you face, the doubts, the addiction, uh, mm. you know, being humble through the temptations and mistakes. Do you want to take us through this journey before now 2020, <laughs> <laughs> before the turning point? Well, yeah. So even mm. it happened also after the turning point. So it okay. obviously shows that I'm not perfect and I was just trying to find my feet. Mm -hmm. um, so this, those pivotal mistakes, temptations, all of them, like, it, we can go deep, but I don't know how deep you want to go. Uh, we can know. go as deep as you want. No, I'll, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it okay. So, yeah. well, there were certain things I used to struggle with because of facing disappointments and facing heartbreak, pain again. Mm -hmm. It became something I was so used to. So I needed to find ways to cope, you know, and so that addiction was addiction with, like, now women and struggling with my oh. urges. You know, I couldn't really... I'm not saying I was the greatest sinner, <laughs> but I couldn't really control my urges like that um, uh -huh. because I was so used to not getting what I wanted so I was just like okay let me get what I want and I'm, I'm also I'm, I'm a bit handsome so wow and that field <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. In, that, in that field of avenue it wasn't difficult for me to talk to girls but I had to learn though so uh -huh. even in the so book now now before we move on just for the girls that are watching uh, do you have a girl are you dating now <laughs> <laughs> or you focused on uh, on your book and the brand? Yeah, I'm currently not dating. I'm just focused on what's ahead of me right okay, now. Okay, so that's yeah. out of the way. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, before that, like there's a chapter in the book that I talk mm. about life before awareness. Okay. So I don't want to give too much away, but like okay. I talk about now the experiences I had as a teenager and how, you know, teenagers are mm. basically. And um, now you see the, the moment that significant turning point happened, I started identifying even through my friends, my, the people around me, that not everyone is, you know, aware of how dangerous our society is heading towards, mm -hmm. you know. Because even if you look at, like, my generation, people, who, how much we go out, how much we drink, you know, yeah. like, it's crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go too, too much into it, but mm -hmm. those problems kind of made me be like, yeah, this is a bit alarming. And so in the book, I talk about, like, the dangers of not being aware, the dangers of not having purpose. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, mm -hmm. the, where there's no vision, the people perish. Yeah. So a lot of people in our generation are perishing because they don't have vision or purpose. Mm -hmm. And how I define vision is, mm -hmm. vision is the GPS coordinates and purpose is the destination. Okay. So how, even when I was in the US, I used to have a teammate, we used to practice football like training pinging the ball to each other back and forth so the purpose was to ping the ball to me and the purpose is to ping the ball to him for me for him to ping the ball to me so 
when you see obviously in football the picture is always changing and so if he gives me a pass that's directly to my feet we usually said the the, the, the GPS coordinates were on mm. because the vision was there but yeah. so so basically if people don't have vision it, it's going to be very difficult for them to achieve their purpose because your purpose may be let's say to become a specific professional in whatever field but the vision can change as well you know there's ups and downs there's bumps in the roads and yeah. those are things that I talk about in the book so awareness is such an important thing for me mm -hmm. yeah. okay interesting and what about the title how did you decide on the narrow path you know when I'm thinking about the narrow path um, it's something that has been you know described in the Bible if I if you know if I can call mm -hmm. it like that if mm -hmm. it be like that you know how they describe he heaven it's the narrow road you know and the other one is really uh, wide broad, yeah. broad yes so how did you how did you come up with the narrow path well everything was I can say divinely inspired because the moment I started writing the book I didn't really have a direction I mm -hmm. just started writing and so it all came together at the end was it's like the narrow path because my mm -hmm. journey is definitely and any journey of anyone who's gonna be successful there's a part where you have to walk alone and it's gonna be difficult because the path towards greatness is not easily journeyed and even the broad path if you to co if you to compare two paths the broad path is usually where everyone is but mm -hmm. if you're doing something that's great there's there's a period in your life where you have to be alone to discover who you are to un understand your purpose your vision and so even in the book i talk about a vision i had when i was in the u.s uh i was in a season of mm -hmm. uh, i was in a dodgy airbnb <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and so in that Airbnb, I was supposed to stay there for 31 days, but I ended up staying there for seven days. My coach rescued me because it was too dodgy. Hopefully. Yeah, I was in the middle of I don't even know where. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really, there was nothing to do. So it was just me and a room, basically. And obviously COVID restrictions were tight there, so you couldn't do much. Mm -hmm. And so that vision was very pivotal in my journey. Um, and so it's in the book, and I talk about how important it is to have vision. You know. Okay. Um, so the narrow path is is definitely mm -hmm. it can be lonely until you find your tribe um but it's 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 the path where a lot of greatness is found okay yeah. so the narrow path we should all at least find our narrow path yeah that <laughs> moment when you discover yourself really mm -hmm. uh when we talk about um when we talk about purpose they it's we you know the thing about identity also comes in mm -hmm. and uh, i i uh, i'm seeing here on uh, chapter eight you're talking about clarity in your identity mm -hmm. so which one comes first do you need to know who you are and what does identity really mean for for someone because you know many people are lost especially in this age because it can't really they in an identity crisis they can't yeah. really figure out who they are what they want to be and all that so it's hard to even talk about purpose so i'm guessing identity comes first but you can tell us mm -hmm. and uh, what your understanding is yeah you answered that correctly i mean it's important to understand who you are before you understand your purpose mm -hmm. because you can't go into purpose without not knowing who you are it's just going to be difficult mm -hmm. so with me how i understood my identity was from it didn't happen just overnight uh, it, it is a journey and i'm grateful to god because god is a, you know i don't i'm not trying to force my beliefs on anyone but I can't understand my identity without God for me personally. Mm -hmm. And so even my purpose, everything just given t was, it, it was given to me like, I can't explain, but I talk about, you know, importance of wisdom. You know, whenever you do discover that purpose, it's important to pursue wisdom because when you do pursue wisdom, wisdom is like, wisdom enlightens your eyes like a man who was once colorblind but now sees. Like it's so important to have wisdom because... Mm -hmm. If you don't have wisdom, it's like you're walking to your own death. Because it, it's, I say this, wisdom is like, if you make wisdom your best friend, it's like you walk with an army because wisdom is like a defense and a safety. Mm -hmm. So with purpose, if you don't take time to pursue wisdom and pursue what it is you're supposed to do on the earth, because I got frustrated. I was like, what am I doing on this earth? And, and a lot of people can relate because you get, you know, you even like when when you go out to the clubs and stuff you know there's a lot of people who do that and yeah. i'm not i'm not bashing them but when you're out and then you're having so much fun but all of a sudden there's a conviction that hits you like whoa you know you're made for more or mm. you know it's time to go home 
those are the those are the cues that your spirit is giving you that yeah there's definitely more but you now need to take that action and pursue what it is that that's mm. that voice is saying and so for me how i reached where i am is because i actually did take time to pursue it and i was very diligent I can't, my desire is crazy because mm. i don't i hate being ignorant okay. you know and and so i wish there were people who would teach you more about yourself at a young age because i was even saying in another interview mm -hmm. if i was told about who I am, my identity, my purpose, when I was like 13, 14, this book would have come when I was Wait, maybe uh, 16, yeah. you know? You know and, mm -hmm. and a lot of young people need that guidance. They need the understanding that if you don't, if you walk this life not knowing who you are, it's just gonna be, you're, you're like, you're gonna be like another plant. It's gonna be forgotten. But mm -hmm. I'm big on legacy. I'm big on doing things, not just for myself, but for my children's children's children. So I'm seeing things beyond my time, you know? Okay. Yeah. No, this is very impressive uh, coming from a youth and you're very young. You said <laughs> you're 22 and you have yeah. so much, you know, wisdom and you're talking about wisdom. Yeah. So how do you pursue wisdom for someone who's, wonder, you know, who's wondering, where do you get wisdom? Is it from books? Because sometimes people will say wisdom comes with age, you know, yeah. so with experience comes wisdom. But for a youth, how do you, how do you pursue wisdom? Well, I like to say wisdom is the application of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have knowledge, how can you have wisdom? So right. the best thing to do is expand your knowledge mm -hmm. and understand that there's people who've gone before you who have gone through several things. You see me, I, 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 I like to be smart where if someone has gone through something before me, I like to see what their mind was and understand their perspective. So I don't need to make the mistakes that they made. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely writing off the back of people who have gone before me. And that's, the, that's, yeah, wisdom comes with experience as well. But I think there's also two other avenues. Wisdom can be given to you by God because there's, there's some things you can't just work for, mm -hmm. no matter how much you try. And unfortunately, you see, there's many people who are, are not smart than how many people are wise these days because even if you look at like how uh this society has so many consumers as creators there's so many people who are supposed to be creators but people are stuck in the consuming mindset dopamine you know it's social media can get crazy yeah but you know if you take time to step away because i did that like this book I, I i wrote after a period of Mm -hmm. Me breaking someone's heart, unfortunately. Ooh. Yeah. Well. But let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. Because I you expected so. a lot from myself. It hit me hard. <laughs> like, that pain really challenged me. And now I started asking myself hard questions. Like, how do I claim to be this person? Um, trying to help other people become better. But I'm here myself facing demons and losing all the time. Mm -hmm. So I took a two-month hiatus off social media just to focus on myself. And through that period now, that's when I discovered that yeah there's a writer in me there's a creative in me and i never used to think i'm creative i used to look at creative people and i used to be jealous <laughs> i said how do you come <laughs> up with this, this creative you know but now mm -hmm. i understand it's also a, a matter of desire you actually have to be eager to know and and pursue these things so there's a lot of people who can take mm. these things and actually practically apply them because i do read a lot i read like crazy mm -hmm. and for me reading is is it just expands my mind and it's, it feeds my soul. Mm -hmm. And so with that, now the knowledge that I read, I'm practical in how I learn. So I always mm -hmm. take time to write what I learn every day. Like if I read specific books or listen to specific podcasts, I, I, I like write the things that challenged me or the things that I'm like, this is very intriguing. Let me look more into this. So there's a lot of things that you can do to pursue wisdom, but practically find a mentor. If you can't find a mentor, let books be your mentors mm -hmm. because for me i didn't find a mentor until just the other day and so those are the things that you should do practically to pursue wisdom you know okay so it comes it's the application of knowledge you need to have knowledge first yeah. you can get it from uh from books you can get it from mentors as you've said it mm -hmm. and and now um uh chapter six you're saying testimony of awareness of knowing how to trust your heart mm. and uh, you mentioned uh, you know sometimes we have we hear a voice inside of us telling us that we need we can become more we need to be more to do more mm -hmm. but how sometimes we just ignore that voice you know so what's the importance of of trusting yeah it's that chapter is very deep mm -hmm. um, and I and I believe you know a lot of people uh, the, you know, your heart can mislead you, and it's misled me so many times. You know, when people say, trust your heart, or yeah. do what your heart says, and your heart doesn't want anything good. 
Um, so and I'm sometimes your heart says something and your mind exactly. says another. <laughs> exactly. So there's mm. always that war between us. Like there's, there's your flesh. The, the, the flesh is like the thing that just wants every craving or it doesn't want to be told no. That stubborn nature within you. Mm -hmm. Then there's the soul and then your spirit. So the spirit is now what relays those messages to your soul. Mm -hmm. And if you're not aware of that communication within you, it's going to be difficult for you to bring forth anything from within you to the world that's going to be great. That's why yeah. I talk about unlocking eternal treasures within because I think, I believe and I'm convinced everyone in this world has greatness in, inside of them, you know. Mm -hmm. In whatever field they choose to pursue, in whatever career, there's greatness. So you need to take time to find that greatness. And that comes from listening to that voice within you that's trying to push you out of your comfort zone because usually the voice of your spirit is not going to tell you to do things that are comfortable mm -hmm. the voice of your flesh will tell you to do things that are comfortable you know procrastination okay. laziness you know just just eat this you know so there's yeah. so many things that's going on within us that not many people are aware of you know so awareness and eternal treasures are com to me they're linked so when you have not that awareness that there's a actual war between you always going on at the same time you know, it's important to now understand how can you let your spirit now rule your being mm -hmm. and not your flesh rule your being. Because if your flesh is ruling your being, you're basically an animal in my perspective. Okay. But you're just feeding <laughs> your cravings and urges and everything. Mm -hmm. But that's not how, I don't believe that's how God designed us to be. Okay. So, yeah, that's basically, yeah, that's basically that's that. That's basically it. Yeah. I think it's, it's amazing. And when you talk about eternal treasures, because you've mentioned it severally, what mm -hmm. do you mean? Because eternal means something that's, that's living forever, you yeah. know, something that won't die. So what do you mean by unlocking the eternal treasures? What are these treasures that are within? That's an amazing question. Mm -hmm. It's excited me. I, I read this verse in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 that says, mm -hmm. He has made everything beautiful in his time, and he has also planted eternity into man's hearts. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I read that verse, it like changed my life. It now made me so eager to know what's this eternity in your heart? How can I understand it? But then I also understood eternity is God's realm. You know, you don't just understand eternity overnight. Mm -hmm. And so eternal eternal treasures is the the good things within you that are gonna take a legacy to or a, a lifetime to understand, you know, because I feel like this book is now an eternal treasure that I that I br I brought forth from within me. Because mm -hmm. even when I'm gone I'll have this book be there, there, you know, and it's maybe the first of many, I don't know. But you see such a piece like this, or when you hear people say your legacy lives on forever, you find out those people definitely touched um, the realm of eternal treasures, mm -hmm. you know, because they're gone, but their, le their legacy continues and, and the life that they've lived and the impact they've had continues going on for forever after they've gone. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the gravity of eternal treasures from okay. my perspective wow amazing well explained thank you what about uh facing doubts because that's uh still part of uh this book chapter yeah. two yeah. um with us pursuing purpose and uh, with you know you know having had that voice but you still have doubts within you you mm -hmm. know there's this imposter syndrome that many people have i do have it sometimes you know so how do you how do you face those well, you see, I, I, def I definitely don't think the battle of doubt ends just like that. Mm -hmm. You always have that voice telling you, uh, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. What's your credibility? Like for me, even while writing the book, I had a lot of doubt. Because again, there were so many excuses that were valid mm -hmm. telling me, why are you writing this book? You're only 22, at the time it's 21. What have you wow. achieved yet? Because I have so many big goals and aspirations that I haven't physically seen yet. So it's like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? But then I realized, you know, everyone has a story. And the thing that made me silence that voice of doubt was understanding we all have a unique, um, like a fingerprint. We all have a unique voice. And every voice is valuable. And so for me, I had to discover that voice. And, and I actually realized, like, the last four years have kind of been equipping me to write the book. Those experiences, if they didn't happen, my failures, my disappointments, this book wouldn't have happened. So I'm mm. grateful for every downfall for everything that kind of like shook me because it, you know I, I think when you overcome something it gives you the credibility to start something like even a business mm -hmm. you know because wisdom authorizes your voice okay. you know because when the when someone hears the voice of wisdom you know you read immediately you someone can understand yeah this person is different so for me with with when you have wisdom within you it's like your your ears receive insight your eyes start seeing foresight your heart starts receiving discernment. So those are the things that I had to like now navigate when I'm when I'm dealing with doubt is that yeah, there's a lot of that 
there's a lot that I've actually done, even though I'm young, mm -hmm. that many people who are not 50 or 60 haven't We've actually done, done. I'm not trying to bash them, but, you know, I like taking risks. So for me, that voice of doubt was really like, yeah, like, you know, I even was talking to my cousin before I started the book. I kept on hearing that voice again, write a book within me. And now I realize that's my spirit. I've, I'm, I'm always in mm -hmm. tune with that voice because I know now through the experiences I've had in the past that mm -hmm. it's definitely my spirit. Okay. And my cousin and I were talking, I said, bro, I don't know, I feel like I should write a book. He said, yeah, same. Um, and then we both established that night, yeah, but we're not going to do it. Because why, why, at what, like, what's the point? But uh -huh. then I got home that night and I <laughs> challenged that thought. I said, why not? And so the next morning I just opened my laptop and started writing. Started writing just yeah. like that. And yeah. here we are. Yeah, Your book here is we are. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wonderful. I love yeah. it. Uh, now your story. Um, people don't know that uh, or people, yeah, you know, you are, you are a footballer, you have been a footballer and that's what took you to the States mm -hmm. and your journey, you know, till where you are now and then forming your brand, um, uh, Motaji. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to tell us your journey, your life journey. Well, football for me has been, it's been my life, you know. Um, mm -hmm. From young I've been playing, like, maybe I started playing at like four or five. Okay. And so my passion for sports is just, it, it's only increased. Um, I never felt like I'm a smart, book smart person. I just felt like the world of sports was just, exciting and you know the adrenaline you get i just loved it so mm -hmm. for me football was and i found out i was good as i was continuing growing so firstly started with when i was i think 12 i got scouted by this um academy called aspire academy and that's when the beginning of disappointments happened because now they were supposed to take me to uganda for a trial and then uganda to europe but they chose someone else other than me and told me i need time to develop and stuff so i was you know i was disappointed as well okay. then when i was thinking when i was 16 the national team uh, under 15 coach wanted to take me in but at the time I wasn't consistent with my game so it was very difficult for me to join them because fitness wise you know, this is the aspect of the okay. fitness wise of the game um, so after that disappointment now I started deciding to okay let me actually get serious you know mm -hmm. see how far I can take it but uh, then I got now scouted by um, this group uh, this academy I played that really helped me called Protégé there's a guy some some uh, some what do I call it? College Connect International. They basically scout players. Mm -hmm. So they scouted me, took me to um, US, and then in the US now, I went to Atlanta for a trial. The trial went well, so now I went to Pennsylvania. And um, because of COVID, unfortunately, I didn't play the way I wanted to play because there were mm -hmm. so many restrictions. So actually, like three weeks into the to my journey in Pennsylvania, the school shut down. Mm. So now I was like, yeah, so where do I go? What happens next? I can't go back home. I just came. So now that's when I went to Michigan. I stayed with my friends there. That's now when we started now just enjoying life. We played a lot of football. We used to train a lot. And then I came back August. School started again. But still, we, you know, in a season where there's like um, maybe 20 plus games, we played five games because of the... Oh the okay, guidelines definitely. and everything so the footage I wanted because there was like Pennsylvania was a stepping stone to now go to like the uh, top university mm -hmm. and so because I didn't get the quality footage I went to a university that I wasn't really happy of but nevertheless you know in the book I talk about that as well but okay. I, I had to okay be like you know I'm here now let me just focus on what's ahead of me and um, yeah we just crazy experiences. I didn't. I didn't know the demands of college football at the time. Mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of young people who like young athletes who want to go abroad, but the journey there is not easy. Uh, there's a lot of things that you know you have to be mm -hmm. mentally strong, even in the in, in any sports. But okay. for me, the the thing that hit me the most was I wasn't mentally prepared. I was physically fit, but, but not, mentally, not prepared. mentally prepared at all. And the fact that I didn't want to go to that university didn't help at all. <laughs> so. Um, then obviously another ch another turning point happened. God gave me guidance, and mm -hmm. I said, "Okay, I'm here for. I feel like I'm here for a while. So let me just focus." And then my game started becoming better. So now 2022 is when basically I played well, but I just felt like you know I I, I want to pursue pro, mm -hmm. and I don't want to just be in uni. And I know there's obviously stepping stones, but I felt like I, you know because my uni is it's a long story, but there were 60 players in the team. Mm. So first team 30, second team 30. So it's intense and, and everyone's fighting for 11. You know, it's, football is only 11 players. Oh, yeah. So it, it kind of gets, the competition was toxic in, in 
how it was in the first semester. Mm -hmm. um, but I just said, you know what, let me just come back home, rediscover myself, uh, reinvent myself. And now I've been here for almost two years, but then there's another, now God willing, another opportunity has come. So okay. yeah, I'm just trying to see how far I can take football, really. All right. Because uh, all, you know, you can dream as big as you want, you can become as much as you want. Yeah. Wish you the best. That's why Tribe of Dreamers is. Yeah. yeah, so tell us about now Motaji yeah. and um, the the foundation of it. Yeah, so the brand basically was actually, so I was supposed to do a brand called Me vs Me, but I didn't, uh, I'm being honest, I didn't think it was the one. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to a few, a few guys who were helping me with the brand and I said, let me just, hold on, let me find out within myself what, what name I can actually use. So I, my, I was talking to my brother, I said, I have a name called The Dreamer. And you know he, he he wants me to give him credit because he helped me. The <laughs> name. So um, so he said, you know what? Because I wanted to use Greek. There was a word in Greek for the dreamer that I liked, but then someone had already taken it. So okay. um, said, I why not just use Swahili? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, that's amazing. Let me even like push now, um, African society, like the African um, community in, in in Swahili as well, because I didn't want to just do a basic brand that's like mm -hmm. like Nike or like the other top top brands but I wanted to carry kind of push Africa more to the to the world so there's the different designs we have coming up that are now inspired by like now the Nigerian kids um, so there's different designs we have so I really feel like Motaji is, is, is gonna be, be putting more more of Africa on the map you mm -hmm. know in terms of sportswear in terms of the quality because we do have quality fabrics here okay. um, and so yeah, it's basically just pushing now more Africa as a, as a community, and, and you know I love Africa. It's, okay. it's the pride of everything. So, oh, I think yeah. that's beautiful. Uh, you're creating African products by yeah. African good quality, and uh, sharing it to the world. Yeah, representing us. That's that's brilliant, amazing. As we come to a close on this, mm -hmm. um, what what is it that um, is key for you? You know, if someone were to take away something from this conversation, yeah. what would it be? So uh, two things, find your vision and find your purpose. Mm -hmm. Because when you find those two things, you're set for life, in my perspective. You, you, you can avoid so many different distractions that, that are gonna come your way. And if you're not founded on something, you're not gonna stand, mm -hmm. you know, you just be pushed like the wind. So if you do find those two things, whatever field or whatever career it may be, it's, it's, it's so important. And it's not just gonna be a benefit to you, but your family, you know, you've seen family businesses uh, have stayed for for lifetimes. So mm -hmm. you could be that person that could change your life, you change your family, change the people that are coming after you. Wouldn't wouldn't need to work as hard as you have to work. So mm -hmm. you're making it easy. You're paving the path for those who are going to come after you in your bloodline. Mm -hmm. So that's those are the two things I would say. Okay, so vision and purpose let us impact your generation. Yeah, wonderful. What can people get you? How can people get? <laughs> this book, how yeah. can people get the, the brand Motaji? Yeah. So you can tell us this is your camera. Okay, so follow mm -hmm. me on Instagram at underscore Muli JR. That's where I'll have the details on the book. That's where you can also find out the, the details on the sportswear. The sportswear is limited edition. We have like uh, six hoodies left, um, 10 vests left. So we started small, but yeah, they're basically sold out. So Get, okay. get, get in touch with me on Instagram and also follow Motaji of Official on Instagram as well. And yeah, that's where you can find me on underscore Muli JR is Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I, I do a bunch of stuff. And there. all the other social media yeah, platforms. Yeah, basically. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Muli, for coming on board and yeah. sharing with us such amazing insights. Yeah. You know, full of wisdom. You are a young man full of wisdom, Thank clearly. You. I'm, humbled. I'm humbled. And I'm glad that I got to keep a copy of the yeah. book. Yeah. So grab yours. Uh, at Motaji uh, Official is where you can get the sportswear at uh, underscore Muli JR is where you can get him and you know get all the details of whatever you need this has been the first conversation of the day we take a short break and then Brand Sakwa will be back with more so stay with us thank you